Hey everybody, uh, it's afternoon here in the desert somewhere in Arizona, uh, awesome place. Uh, but we've got a lot of time and not a lot to do. So um, if you're like me, uh, we got our um, RV and it was used. I didn't use the generator, didn't have much experience with it. And the first time I tried to use it, I had an error. It, you know, it started, it would run for about five seconds and then stop um, and it would start blinking. And it, if it blinks three times, it says it needs a technician. So, you know, I've, I've done this multiple times with, with, you know, not getting any different results and done a lot of research. Some people said if the oil is too high, it can cause issues. Um, you also need to be aware that you need to have at least a quarter of a tank of gas in your class C if, if you're, if you're running a gas engine, um, and it's providing the gas from your, your vehicle is providing gasoline or fuel for your generator. Um, so make sure you have a quarter tank of gas, make sure your oil is not too high. And the last thing is, you know, I had heard a lot of people having issues and it's the carburetors. Um, it, I do not know a lot about engines and my, my in-laws are all mechanics. And so they're probably, you know, me doing some of the stuff that I'm doing might make some people cringe. So if it does, I'm sorry, but, uh, you know, something today worked for me and I want to share it. Um, I've done a lot of research, called around, and it sounds like the carburetors are clogged because the fuel that we're putting into our RVs isn't as, as good as what we'd like to have running more constantly through the generators. So um, your, your carburetors get clogged, essentially. Um, and what you need to be doing is running your generators to properly maintain them probably once a week for a good you know, 5, 10, 15 minutes or something like that, or once every two weeks. Um, in my case, I try and start it, it would blink, you know, shut off after five seconds every single time, blink three times. I called around and they, you know, the people, the mechanics said, you know, the easiest thing to do is just replace your carburetor because if you try and fix it, it'll fix for a while and then ultimately it'll happen again. Um, and I think the carburetor repair was, you know, multiple hundreds of dollars. So I didn't want to do that. Um, so what I ended up doing was a buddy of mine suggested we try some carb cleaner, you know, take the fuel, you know, the, the filter off and just explore. So I'll show you what I did um, and how I got my engine to run a little bit longer than the five seconds before shutting off. And essentially it just started running. Um, so it's a success story for me and hopefully it can be the same for you. So um, let me try and do what we can to uh, to get the uh, open this thing up and I'll show you as I'm doing it what I was doing. And hopefully it'll be something that'll that'll benefit you as well. Okay, so hopefully y'all can hear me and it doesn't get too loud and I don't get in the way. Um, so ultimately, you know, getting into your engine, your compartment for your generator, and I just found some way to just prop this up because it's a pain in the ass, but uh, to try and be working when this is falling down on you all the time. I also, this is what I found. It's the, uh, the gum out carbon choke cleaner. Um, and that's what I ended up using for, for cleaning it out and spraying inside. So getting a cover off of your generator is relatively simple set that to the side and if your your uh, generators like mine <clears throat> there is a a choke switch here and you're going to want to press it over for a while it'll ultimately start blinking and tell you that it's ready and then you press the other side to start now we'll see what happens when i try press it this time and see if uh if it goes for longer if it stops after the five seconds but we'll choke it prime it Okay, it's ready. And I start it. Fortunately for me, mine is now running right. So here's what I did to do that. So the first thing I did was I took off um, the air filter. Uh, it's just a couple of wing nuts. The first one you take off holds the, the housing. Um, oops, let's find that. Get that back. And then you're going to want to take off the air filter on the inside as well. Um, once you get in there, we'll get that in a minute. So once you've got that out, I ended up spraying a couple sprays of the carb cleaner in there. I tried to start it, same thing happened, uh, no luck. Then I started it again. While it was running, I sprayed a little bit more in there and just be careful. Um, I'm sure that can start a fire if you've got too much fluid in there and whatnot. The next thing I did was as it was running the final time, I started just to toggle on this choke here myself. And I just throttled it a little bit as it was starting to, you know, working it to, 
just keep it active, I guess. And after it got past the five seconds, you know, I kept throttling for like another 10, you know, just on and off, on and off. And then I let it go. And it just, to my surprise, it kept going, it kept going, it kept going until I shut it off. Um, I did try and start it again um, from the inside. And it did the five seconds and then died out again. So I came back out here, worked with it again with the throttle, let it run for another, you know, almost 10 minutes. And in the end, I shut it back off, went from the inside, tried it. And it seems to be working now. So like I said earlier, I'm going to make sure I'm starting this thing every couple of weeks or a week or so just to let it run to get it gummed out so it, it doesn't bunch up again. Um, but hopefully it saved an $800 fix. Uh, and hopefully this helps you a little bit too and you can figure it out, try it, and see if it works for you and what you're trying to do. But uh, good luck. Anyway, I'll put more information about what kind of generator it is exactly. Um, and hopefully it's, it's what you need.